When using forms to capture data into Airtable, there is often a need to show different user journeys depending on, for example, the type of user. In this video, I will show you how to use software to build conditional form paths as well as how to show and hide different fields depending on the user responses. Stick around. Hi there, this is Greg from Business Automated. Software has released brand new feature, which is conditional forms. And in this video, I'll show you today how I'm building up conditional input forms for Airtable for the automation portal that I'm creating over here. So for the ones that are not familiar with software, software is a fantastic tool to build basically a customer portal or internal tools right on top of Airtable and a couple of other data sources. In this case, I'm actually building a simple portal for an automation collective and I'm using uh, some of the default templates from, from software and also a database here, which is pretty much something which you can get in the link in the description of this video and you can kind of start working from that straight away. So you can see that in here, I'm having a basic uh, Airtable that contains clients, projects, and so on. And here my problem was how to onboard different types of users with different types of questions. So depending whether this is a consultant, we would like to ask them specific types of questions. If this is a client, we would like to ask them different types of questions. And this leads over here to a registration form that will be different depending on a different different user. So whatever we select a client, it will show us a different journey versus if we select, for example, consultant. If we select consultant, we will get a different set of questions. If we select client, we will get a different set of questions here as well. As well as we'll have some like additional fields popping up over here for that clients to fill out depending on the answers that we have over here. So whether they want to post the project now, yes or not, um, and whether, for example, they would like to invite someone else over here. So I will show you how to build all this very, very quickly so that you can know how to get started with it. So I'll be building exactly the same form together with you so that you can follow all the steps here. So let me just start from the beginning. So what we will do over here is I already have this registration form, but now I want to create a new registration form. All right, so we have created brand new form. So the first step over here will be adding a new form block. So I'll just search for form. And here you will see that we have the conditional form. So I'll add the conditional forms. What I like about the layouts over here is that there is a layout which allows to add a video. So what I will do over here is I selected the layout with the video and I'll paste a video URL here. To be able to add questions, we need to save our data first. So what we will use as a data source, you can see there is a couple of different options where you can submit this. Uh, in this case, like make webhook, uh, email and so on. In this case, we want to save it directly to Airtable. So we will select Airtable over here. We'll select our base and the user table. This is the table where we want to send all those information from the submission form. Okay, and now we can start creating questions. You will see that we actually have a step over here already and we'll start customizing the questions here. Within the form here, you can add multiple steps. So you can see that I'm added step two, step three and so on, and then step four within each step, you can also have multiple sections. And I'll show you a little bit later how to use both sections and the step. So let me delete the section over here. And to make it a little bit easier to understand, I'll just name the steps right, right here. So now within the section, I'll customize the, the heading as well as this description. All right, and now I will start adding fields. And then the next field here will be a drop down field. For this drop down field, which will be linking to the user type, instead of mapping directly to the, to the source, because we don't want them to be able to select admin, we'll remove it, we'll not map it to the source, and over here we'll remove admin. So the only options that will be available is the client and the consultant. So this is the choice. We will call it you. R 
and then we'll also make it mandatory so at the moment we have the name the email and so on and then we have the next step so now we'll add some additional questions specific to the consultants and then finally we will add a field which is a checkbox where we will ask if we want to invite anyone else into this portal we'll make it optional and this will conclude all the information that we're having for the consultant section now let's move over to the clients and inside of clients I will show you how we will use actually three different sections so the first section will be specific to the details of the client and now we are adding a drop-down field which will be important for hiding the next section that we have over here so this drop-down will be called do you want to post a new project now and based on this let's change the order to us defining the source and based on this we will later select visibility for the next section for the, this section will be called project details and this one will be invite and now we will add a rich text field that will map to the project description and this rich text field will allow us to insert a basically a more elaborated project description with bullet points and so on okay and finally this will be the last point which will be a checkbox asking whether you would like to invite someone else to the automation collective so inside of the client we have three different sections with project details which will be conditional depending on the answer to the question whether we want to post details now and then finally we have the section which is called invite others this is the part when we ask for the list of emails if you would like to invite other users into your account or to join you on the automation collective all right so now we have different sections now let's move over to the logic so this is at the moment you see that everything here seems to be following following a line but this is where we will start adding the conditions to make sure that the answers follow a proper path so the first question would be that in all other cases we would move on to the consultant unless we will add the path users would go to the client if the conditions from the answer here you are so this is where you were asking if this conditions would be a value called client so if this is a client then you can see we have created a branch over here so now from from this place we actually have a next step you notice that at the very end we have invite someone else to join automation collective so in this case we would say all answers go to submit unless users would go to invite others to join if the answer here invite someone else to join is in this case because this is a checkbox not empty if it's empty we will submit the form if it's not empty we'll invite others to join okay and we need to now execute similar thing inside of the inside of the client so first of all in all cases the users would go to submit unless it's in a specific reason users would go to invite other to join if the answer is not empty and you can see that from invite others to join we will always end up at submit so this is how we have created a conditional route depending on the conditions that we have specified over here now for the final set for project details we want this project to be visible only in a specific condition and that condition will be if the preceding answer do you want to post project now if this condition is yes in all other cases this specific form would be hidden so now let's do a preview of this form all right and now we are in the preview view so let's just test it quickly out and first let's see what happens if we click consultant all right so we have the view for the consultant this is great if we change it now to client yep now we have questions about the client what is the industry what is the budget for the project do you want to pause the project now the moment we click we'll start seeing the project here if we change our mind we can also change it to no let me browse the consultants and then as a next step you can see that there is a submit button unless 
we decide to click invite and this will give us an option to invite some other users. All right, submitted. So that's everything and I hope this was useful for you guys and this way you will know how to use conditional forms and how to build up user journeys that are matching the requirement of your portal or whatever information flow you're building for internal or external reasons. You can find the link to this portal in the description of this video as well as this base. So hopefully this was helpful for you and uh, good luck building your own user flows and good luck automating your business. Have a good day. Bye.